Dave here, how are you? This is the third step. This is we've taken the text file from Cam in Aspire. We've loaded it onto a USB stick and put it into this machine down here, which has got Mac 3 installed on it. So this little guy is going to tell this fellow here what to do. Now I'm going to load the G code to start with and we've saved it as a Mac 3 arcs millimeters and we've saved we called it um, slotted holes and we gave it the date which was today and you'll see why I need to come in here and I go up to file and load the G code down to slotted holes EM 6.35 that's it that's the one I want I'm going to click on there to open it and it's loaded it into the machine now I need to set the X, Y, and Z points on the job. Now to do that, move that out of the way, I'll use the touch plate, and this is the touch plate, without touching it on the itself there. You see on the back here, it has these little slots. It's going to hook over this corner. I don't have the variable frequency drive turned on at the moment, so I'm safe to touch the spindle. I'll pop that on there. This is magnetic. I'm going to pop that on the side of the cutter itself. And you can see that I'm held up tight there. Now over here, I'm going to say auto tool zero. And it's offering me some suggestions. I feel a little bit khaki handed here, but not to worry, this is just for demonstration. It's the Z axis by default is there. I'm gonna say I want the X axis and also the Y axis. And so it will know exactly where it is in those three dimensions. When I click OK, the machine, the tool is going to be lowered down into position. So we stand back, and down she comes. It comes down very slowly. I've told it not to travel fast. It's going to pop back up again. Now I have to rotate. It's saying align the tool flutes for the X axis. So I've got to make them line up this direction along the X axis. This is why I don't have the machine turned on. And it's now going to come back this way when I click OK. And it's just going to touch the lip. And then it will bump back quickly. See that? So don't get your hands in the way. And I'm going to rotate it so it's along the Y axis. And I'm going to say OK. And it'll go back and it's going to come back this way quickly as well. And up. And now that is done. It's aware of where that corner is. Now, I've, next thing I have to do is I have to tell it to go to zero. If you don't tell it to go to zero, it'll punch a hole in there like it just did earlier. Ah, I'm learning. All right, here we go. Go to zero. And it does it quickly. So be aware and always be near this stop button. I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to tell it what to do. I'm going to have my hand on the stop button just in case it doesn't do what I want it to do. So I'm going to say go to zero. Done. Now that is absolutely perfectly in the corner of where it's going to start from. It's, it's amazing. All right. Now I'm going to turn the variable frequency drive on. That powers this up. And then I'm going to start it through its process. I'm going to wear the hood because I don't have the dust shroud on this because it's more effective for you to watch what's happening. And the plan at the moment is I'll turn it on and I'll hit cycle start over here and it will tell me what tool I want. It's going to say, you know, tool one, this will go yellow and I'll say, that's fine. That's the tool I want. It's offering for me to change the tool if, I, if I've got the wrong one in. Then I'll hit cycle start again and it will come up, it'll start the spindle up, travel over to its first point and start the cutting. This is the exciting part. So I'm gonna put this on, turn the variable frequency drive on. Okay, now all this time, I will be staying very close to this. I'll flip this on, turn her over. Alrighty, first thing, cycle start. Oh, I'll turn the other dust extractor on as well. 
It might catch some of it, you never can tell. Cycle start. Let's come down. Are you on the right tool? Oh, I think I am. <laughs> Fingers crossed. This is the part that's exciting. All right. Start. Spin her up. And go over to the first position. I'll get out of the way of all the cameras. Amazing is that. I'm going to turn the variable frequency drive off. And now I'm going to jog the machine back over there. So I'm going to go page up and across. So it's out of the way. And let's take it out of the clamps and have a look. There you go. That's perfectly positioned all around the board. I've got the back with the tab still in there. This one, let me move along. Perfect. Now that's just a matter of me knocking the tabs out and being done. So what do you think of that? Thanks for watching. Keep on coming back. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and uh, don't forget to ring that bell. I'm going to continue on doing more projects with this, but I thought it'd be nice to take us through from actually creating a vector to multiplying the vector, taking out a drawing over to tool paths, to machining, and then from machining into Mac 3, and then Mac 3 starting it up in here. And I took you through those processes in Mac 3 on purpose. So there you go. Thanks for watching. See you next time.